So dear friends, I am here once again with you. We have had the beautiful experience of the St. Mary's Feast at the Basilica. I think I will come a little later on this. Before that, let me break the word for you, the message of this week. The Gospel of Luke chapter 15 verse 11 onwards speaks about the beautiful parable of the prodigal son. You know, you have to you have to accept that Jesus is a master storyteller. Because this particular story is considered one of the best stories in the whole world that's recorded. And how beautifully Jesus weaves, as it were, the love of a father for his son, even to the extent of expressing his love for one who has been unfaithful to him, who has done a lot of harm to his interests and surely harmed himself too. And what does this story of the prodigal son tell us? I don't think I need to repeat the story itself of the two sons, one of whom asked his father for his share of property and then he takes it and gallivants he goes and spends and wastes and you see that he comes back he comes back because he was living like a pig now oh, a one who was feeding the pigs and even that food he could not get he remembers that in his father's house there were many many servants were much more happier than him, so he decides to come back and join as a servant. And on the other side, you see the father was desperately waiting for his son. Anyone would have said good riddance, but then this father was looking out every day, perhaps in the distance, seeing if his son would come back. And when he does come back, you see the beautiful scene that the father moves to the son rather than waiting for the son to come to the father and embraces him, embraces him. This is the story, this is the short story of this, of this gospel. Now what's the message that he gives? The unconditional love of God for us. I say unconditional because God has no conditions. And to, for a sinner to say that God accepts him the moment he takes his step backward or rather forward to meet his father, to meet God, to reconcile with God, to ask for forgiveness. God is ever ready to forgive, ever ready to forgive. Actually, even the, the first reading also gives a beautiful example for us as how God is always merciful. God is always generous. And the story of the second son is also important for us because some of us who are first of, first of all we don't think we are sinners we don't think we are in need of God's forgiveness and we say that the church always belongs to us the Bible is always with me God is always at my beck and call as it were the second son teaches us this very strong lesson you know the second son is one who was always faithful to the father and when he sees that this prodigal son has come back and father is fussing over him so much that he's giving a banquet, the son bursts out and says that, what am I? I have served you all my life and I've never deserved even a, perhaps a small meal in enjoyment with my friends. But the father tells him, son, you're always mine and what I have is always yours. But the son doesn't believe it. You know, the son behaves like a servant. The second son behaves like a servant and is almost quantifying or qualifying what is his share. But the first son, who has squandered everything, has still hope, has still trust in God. I would like to ask, which of these two sons are you? Are you the first one who has lost everything, but then you have not lost hope? and God is waiting for you. Or oh, are you the second son that you go every day for Mass 
every sunday you receive the holy communion you read the bible you do all good things and you have almost measured given points to the good things that you have done and you are always expecting a big answer a big reward for you and god says i would not trust this person because he is still a servant a servant who waits for those coins that the master gives he doesn't behave like a king i have quoted it i have said it quite often you know that example of st francis of assisi those of you who have gone to assisi you see that beautiful horse and st francis sitting on a horse a little bent down and the guide tells you that's the story of st francis that he had a dream and in the dream the lord asked him would you like to be a servant or would you like to be a master a king and francis of course understands beautifully many of us are servants we are slaves we are slaves to persons we are slaves to things so would you like to continue to being a slave or a servant or would you like to be a king a king you know we find such kings even among the poor i saw a small boy his first clothes were in rags but the smile that he gave was i don't think even prince of england would have given that such a beautiful smile to see. i almost own everything i am happy god has given me what i want that's enough i don't think of tomorrow i don't think of my future as such because god is my father i trust in god and even if i have made a mistake even if i made a blunder god will take me back that's the message of this sunday so my dear brothers and sisters as i said perhaps we are in two categories the ones who have really sinned and we are in need of god need of god's mercy or perhaps ones who those others who think they have not sinned but we are still far away from god we are still far away from god because we don't trust in god we trust in our own strength we trust in our own spirituality we trust in our own devotions we trust in the merits the works that we have done ultimately perhaps god chooses the first the first example of the son who is lost but found again the son who was dead but lives again and therefore we die many times but if we have hope god makes us come back again i now take you to a basilica feast which we have celebrated on the 8th of september everyone will agree it's a beautiful experience you know the whole of bangalore comes together for this feast and in different colors and different shapes and different i would say perhaps experiences of the people many have told me you know there was a correspondent who rang up to me asking for a bite about the feast and even before i could say that he said that your feast of basilica at shivaji nagar something special because when we see the faces of those people we know that they believe in god their belief is so strong they walk miles and come they are not worried about the weather they are not worried about standing long long time in the queues perhaps half a day they stand in the queues in order to go to that shrine and once they reach the shrine is as if that the mother mary was so beautifully receives them and everything sort of melts down to say that you know this particular correspondent who is a photographer he told me that i have got beautiful photographs of your people when i see them he says i don't have to doubt in god because with the unction that they pray with the devotion that they look at mother mary they are un they i mean they are not bothered of what is happening the noise that is going around their their focus is on mother mary i think we have a a special perhaps a religious experience in bangalore every time we celebrate this feast and this year i was very much impressed to say that mother mary was with us in all that we did no one can question us to say that how we did it because it just passed day after day 10 days 9 days of novena and i don't know whether you noticed you know every day in the evening at the flag hoisting the clouds used to be dark there was scare of the rains the weather reports always said that there would be rains and rains but at that particular moment when the people were waiting for the flag hoisting there was no rain there was no the rain came always afterwards 
I think only one day there was a slight drizzle, but all the other days, including the last day when we had the procession, there was beautiful weather. There was no rain at all. You know, on that fourth day, I think when I was standing there on the top at the flag post, and I was looking at the crowd, what faith they have, and how perhaps Mother Mary also protect us. It's like the Mary, Mother Mary was stopping the rains. Stopping the rain. You know, one picture came to my mind, which I had seen in a photograph some many years ago. A woman that goes in rain, heavy rain, she is drenched, but she has, she is carrying her child, rolled in that shawl. Nothing for the child. There is no rain for the child at all. The mother takes all the rains. I was just thinking for myself that it looks like that Mother Mary is taking all the rain upon herself while protecting us, the children. I wish to. thank very much all those who made this feast a very great success first of all our own brother priests brother martin kumar and all his assistants all the priests in the basilica all the priests who came on different days for devotions for eucharist for confessions and all those volunteers all those members i must make a very special mention about all all our government officers starting with our own mla Mr. Rizwan Arshad, who saw to it that everything was in order, the roads were cleaned, the streets were cleared, along with the other health officers, the corporation officers, the police did a very good job, a very good job. We are always grateful to them. They are faceless. Perhaps people see the face of us Christians, face the the they see the face of the archbishop, the priest, but these are the behind the scenes who are struggling, who have worked a lot. I wish to thank them very much, and I, I am sure Mother Mary has blessed you in many ways with different blessings, with different gifts, and perhaps a forgiveness, a reconciliation, a solving of a problem, or some particular prayer that we had of Mother Mary. I have heard of many people who have got healed also. And I, I was told of one particular person who came walking from long, long. thinking that he was sick and he was really sick but then when he came to the basilica and when he goes back he goes happily to say that mother mary has cured me so many other stories i think the basilica feast is a great experience for bangalore it brings the people together of all the different languages of different groups of different areas and even for our hindus and muslims it's an experience to share with the christians mr rizwan himself said in the last day speech to say that this is not only a feast of the christians but all the religious people and all of them are coming here i am so happy to serve them and provide them all the facilities this also has been the experience of so many others and i thank each and every one of you who have helped in the in the celebrations the volunteers our brother priests the government officials and everybody may our lady continue to bless and keep us always united in her love and service i just make a side reference also to the celebration of the mother's feast but the mary's feast the nativity feast which is also celebrated and i make my mention in my in my homily that day that it's the day of the girl child perhaps i need to make a little more explanation about this you know we are so much devoted to mother mary no one it doesn't cross to anybody to give disrespect to mother mary or to disregard her but mother mary must be pointing not to herself but to all the women the girl children the babies that are there that whatever honor you give me give it to them give it to them i say this because pointedly because the girl children and the women are not treated properly in our community even in the christian community leave aside the traditional the customary the perhaps the superstitions that we have about women and how we discard them how we make them perhaps feel unwanted feel segregated and feel as second class citizens in our community there are many families that do not give respect to women 
there are many families who take the women for granted that they have to be the like the servants they have to cook they have to provide it's their as good as it's inborn duty to do it whereas we men we are on a higher scale we don't do manual work we don't do perhaps do that much and we are not even aware i'm not saying all the cases there are men who take care of good care of their women good care of their girl child also but then this is the general trend that is there and that's why the church makes an effort to celebrate this day as the day of the girl child that we have to encourage girl children in our families that the parents have to see that let my first child be a girl child not necessarily a boy child why should the boys get all the preference and all the priorities as such why don't we think of the girls as also equal to the boys why do we have to sell our girls in a way what we call the dowry system that we have we are almost selling the girls there are parents who don't even want to educate fully the girl but we pet the boys we are so much affectionate to our boys and this one and therefore the church insists that just as we respect mother mary and give her great glory and honor please treat your children girl children in a like manner i was very happy that last week the office bearers of the catholic women's cooperative mrs priya francis is the president along with the other officers and also resource persons came together in palna bhavan about 50 of them from different parishes as to how to make the girl children wanted required and empowered in a very special way that their talents have to be recognized you know the girls should not be told only to study study perhaps they have a great talent for dancing for singing perhaps some other uh, professions that they can take up and therefore to in order to discover the talents of the children the different competitions and different encouragements different prizes that can be given they had a beautiful discussion i was there present at the end i think this has to be multiplied at every parish level the women in the parish perhaps have to take a responsibility also you know don't feel bad if i say that the many of the women are responsible for the discrimination of the girl children in the families and the women themselves of course the men are also sometimes responsible but many many cases the women are responsible i feel sad when a woman tells me that i want a boy i said why not a girl why not a girl if you as a woman don't want a girl child who would want her so therefore that our women perhaps realize the the what we call the historical or the biological mistake that we made of preferring boys or men more than the women and the girl child i request all the parishes to take initiatives at the catholic women cooperative collective in order to make this effort to bring up our girl children our 8th of december sorry 8th of september perhaps two days earlier 5th of september was the day of our teachers and the day of mother teresa i shall come for the teachers a little later mother teresa that was the day for us and perhaps this year was 25 years that anniversary of mother teresa she was a great soul she has brought so much good will to the country for the christians for the women for the sisters and especially the christian service of charity and she is called the patron of the poor the mother of the poor surely some call it not pejoratively mother of the gutters the people who are in the gutters meaning to say that the lowest or the least are considered by her I was fortunate that day I was invited by our Mother Teresa sisters at Venkatalla and I celebrated a mass in the evening for them. It was such an experience to see all the sisters that Mother Teresa still lives among her sisters. Each of them have got that same zeal and passion to serve the poorest of the poor at Venkatalla they are they are looking after the aged, the sick, the abandoned at telling rajpuram the children sushubhavan we call it and so also at uh, 
Jalahalli also they have a convent. But more than anything else, not that I am picking up Mother Teresa sisters alone, there are many other congregations also who are doing equally very much dedicated work of the poor. And therefore Mother Teresa gives us that perhaps that aspect of life that there is dignity in poverty. That the poor people perhaps have got no things, they have no money, they have no possessions, they have no land or houses, but they have dignity. And if they live perhaps in they if they live in struggles, they die rich. They die in dignity. I have seen it in Mother Teresa houses where even people who have been abandoned die with a big smile. And ultimately perhaps that is more important for us, not how we live, but also how we die. And Mother Teresa teaches us that ultimately our life is in the hands of God. And as much as we are considerate and perhaps compassionate to the poor, God will also not only forgive our sins, but also be considerate and compassionate to each one of us. I now go to the question which deals a little about the teachers also. The question today is what is a catechist? What are the duties of a catechist? Do they have to go under do they have to undergo any training to be a catechist? I said when I speak about the catechist, let me speak about the teachers. The 5th of September was also the day of teachers. And our teachers, we salute them. It's because of them a generation passes from the childhood to adulthood. The teachers are the ones who sort of make men and women out of children because of the education. And therefore, the teacher's job is a noble job. I spoke to the teachers recently in this week and I told them that this is a vocation, a very special vocation. And what's the difference between a teacher and a mother? A mother is someone who teaches at home and a teacher is someone who is a mother in the school. A teacher is someone who is a mother in a school. You know, many of the children pick up the liking or dislike for a particular subject because of their teachers. The teachers, surely each of them try their best. Many of the teachers are surely perhaps they have got difficulties. They have their domestic problems. They have their own families. They have perhaps they don't get a big salary. Sometimes they have to I mean, travel to their school miles together. They are doing a great sacrifice. I I am sure that the parents especially appreciate the work of our teachers. Many of our parents, they say we are giving money, so therefore they should teach, they should do it. I smile and say that you parents, you can't look after one or two children. Look at these teachers, how they look after the 30, 40, 50 children in a class. And with all, every child gets that affection that is necessary. And therefore, first of all, I speak to the teachers, live up to your life, live up to your vocation. Live up to perhaps what God has called you. The child that is there in front of you, perhaps it's a small child today, insignificant, perhaps looks very shabby, but then tomorrow she could be the queen of the society. Maybe she could be something and someone for which you will be perhaps appreciated very much. On the other hand, I speak to the society and the parents very specially. Be kind and considerate to the teachers. Don't think it's a it's a job that you can get. You know, you can't buy, you can buy medicines, you can't buy health. You can pay the tuition fees, but you can't pay for knowledge. You can perhaps do many things with money, but you can't get goodness and generosity and character because of money. So therefore, be always considerate to your teachers, whether they are paid, not paid, they have problems, they have difficulties but then understand them. Don't just rush to defend your children. Sometimes the children also perhaps mislead us to say that this teacher did this, teacher did that. But at the heart of every teacher, she has the child in mind, your child in mind, and therefore your, your son or daughter in mind. So therefore support our teachers also. I now go to what's called the catechist. The question, as I said, who is a catechist? And what are the duties of a catechist? Do they have to undergo training, etc.? 
First of all, catechist is someone, if a teacher imparts knowledge and wisdom, a catechist imparts faith and religion. I would say the teacher is on the secular side, perhaps teachers could be also religious teachers, but then mostly the teachers teach science, English, maths, etc. A catechist is one who passes on the faith and religion. Both are equally important. The catechist is also very important because without the catechist and good catechists, we would not get a, a love and affection for our God. We have seen the gospel today, the compassionate God that we have. And the unconditional love of God is communicated to us through a catechist. The word catechist comes from the Greek word called katecheo. Katecheo means listen, listen. Listen Israel, Shema Israel. Love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. So therefore listen. So the catechist is one who makes the people listen or communicates the message to the others. And catechist is one who gives the knowledge of God. Just as, as I said, the teacher gives the knowledge of maths, science, the languages, the catechist gives the knowledge of the religious matters of faith. So therefore, catechists, first of all, have to be persons of faith. I say this because perhaps catechists is not a job. Once again, it's not a job. That you study something you and you impart to the children. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in perhaps the religious realities, how would you communicate to your children? You know, the children of this age are very sharp. You can't give to someone else what you do not have. You might pretend you might uh, perhaps make gestures and so many things, but many of the children know that you have no faith. You are a bad example for religion. So therefore, I first of all, I tell the catechists, believe in God, pray before you teach catechism, and surely give good example, be good models. Should the catechist be, what are the duties of a catechist? The catechists of the duties are to impart to the children in some way about faith, about God, about the religion. So therefore, the, te the teacher or the catechist has to make an effort, as it were, first of all, as I said, to prepare themselves, to prepare themselves spiritually, because this is a very, very important aspect of a person's life. I wouldn't hesitate to say that religion is born in the, at home, but faith is also continued in our schools, in our catechism classes to the catechist. So the catechists also have a great role to play as to why and how you believe in God. Should they be trained? Surely I said training helps a lot. The teachers have to equip themselves. They have to prepare their lesson. If today is going to, the teacher is going to communicate to the children the God's love in the form of the parable of the prodigal son, naturally the teacher has to read it, has to prepare it. And in our diocese, perhaps we have, have training courses for the catechists. There are two types of catechists in our diocese. One, the catechists or the teachers who teach catechism in our schools. In the, during the syllabus time, perhaps there are many schools. We have religion class, we have the Bible class. May not be at the syllabus, in the, including the syllabus, but outside of the school, the schools and management tries to make use of the catechist in order to teach catechism to the children. The second type of catechists which are very, very important according to me are what we call the Sunday catechism teachers or Sunday catechists. They have to prepare well. They have to impart into the students that faith and love of God, to believe in God, not just what we call the theoretical knowledge. Um, I mean, I know that some catechists just bring the children, teach them our Father, Hail Mary and some little things and send them. It's like, you know, you make the, you put the, into the mind of the children a certain dislike for religion itself, for faith itself, for God itself, for that age. Don't do that. Don't do that. If you, even if you cannot perhaps teach or you don't have no time, you can excuse yourself and go, but then don't do a bad job as a catechist. The catechists are very important. They have to be trained. There are courses organized for Sunday catechism and the other teachers, and they should make use of it. But more than anything else, catechism is a science of the heart. It's the art of the heart. 
you know St Francis de Sales is to say the the heart of the education is the education of the heart the heart of the education or rather the center of the education is to touch the heart and that's the work of the catechists in a very special way i wish you my dear brothers and sisters a happy weekend with your families and surely with your friends and the others who matter you god bless you my dear friends please do share your feedback your impressions and your experience or send a message to the email address as you find on the screen archdblr at gmail.com and you also have the phone number the mobile number wherein you can send your message or uh, whatsapp on this number archbishop is ready and waiting to answer your questions if you have any question any doubt any uncertainty or there's no clarity upon something you can ask those questions and with the discretion that the archbishop will surely answer these questions in the weekly feature shepherd's voice thank you and we look forward to the next episodes